edition of Okra's Facebook Live. So, um, my name is Tima Kamara, and with me I have Carmen Smith with the Ada Recycling Coalition, Kara Burst with the Jigsaw Nation, Michael Patton, Plan Legacy, Hilda Hershey with OSU and Sustainable Stillwater. All right, thank you. Um, so today we are going to talk about um, prescription drug disposal. As we all know, uh, we might have seen um, problems arising because of um, drug overdose or drug misuse. So today we have our team here um, who are going to talk to us about um, ways in which we can safely dispose our medication. So um, we have a couple of questions to ask them. And you can join into this conversation by um, either commenting or asking questions and they're here, they can help you to answer some of their, your questions. And let us know that you're watching, like or comment, drop them in the comment box and also you can share with your friends so that they can join into the conversation as we go. Um, so, um, I just want our team here to tell us a little bit about drug disposal, what um, your knowledge about let our audience know more about drug disposal. What is it? Um, here in Oklahoma, we've made quite a bit of progress over the last several years to properly handle um, waste medications. Uh, we can uh, dispose of particularly the more harmful controlled drugs through our police departments or our sheriff's departments. Uh, I think every county in the state of Oklahoma now has has uh, set up a process where you can go to your police department and and they will have a disposal box where you can place controlled materials such as opiates, uh, uh, things uh, like painkillers and stuff such as that. If you have other household medications, uh, there are numerous locations in various places where you can dispose of just general prescription drugs, antibiotics, and that type of thing. I know that the Chickasaw Nation has several locations within their, within the nation to do that. Uh, various um, uh, pharmacies are now taking this, uh, old medications. Uh, there are other various programs set up throughout the state to do that. I can't speak to all of them, but I think some in the, on this panel can do that. So, so do you guys like um, know about impact programs or locations where you have boxes in your community? Can you tell our audience about it? Mm -hmm. I know in Stillwater we have uh, collection boxes at a few pharmacies. Rizux comes to mind. I think there's one other pharmacy. The police department will take material back. And also on campus at OSU, um, at the Student Health Center, there's also a take back box there for pharmaceuticals. Uh, in Ada, we have the Light Horse Police Force with the Chicksaw Nation, and they have a take back program uh, with a box set at their office, and then also at our employee health clinic, uh, Country Club. I just want to say I'm pleased that. Um, Okra is taking up this issue. Um, it's not a traditional thing that you think recycling um, advocacy groups would take because it truly is disposal and not recycling. Um, but I'm really pleased that I think recycling movements in America focus too long on tonnage. They were, we were trying to justify our existence by look how many tons we diverted from the landfill. So glass bottles were a high priority for us. But we know in the big picture that it's not tons that cause the problem, it's the toxicity of these materials. And, what is more toxic per pound than probably our medication. So I'm pleased we're doing this. And that's also a nice change that we think about, um, we think of trash as ugly and we want to recycle so we don't want to see ugly landfills, but there's also a safety concern. And this is something in our lives that becomes part of the waste stream that is not only harmful to you, but also to the environment. And we see the impact of improperly disposed of drugs in our streams and our rivers, and even keeping them in your home becomes an issue for safety and concern people come into your home. I mean, we've all heard the stories of, of people taking pills from, and medicines of all types of, from the home. So I encourage people to be proactive and, and go back and right now, look at the medications you have in your home, go to the medicine cabinet, 
go and find these and say, do I use these anymore? If not, why am I keeping these in my home? Take the opportunity to be proactive and find these programs. Okay. Um, thank you so much for those um, wonderful answers to our question. And if you're watching us and you have a question or you want to be part of um, the conversation, please drop in your questions in the comment box or let us know that you're watching by liking our video or share them and invite people um, to watch. So um, why do you guys think it's important to safely dispose drugs? I know you talk about some risks involved in it, but. I think it just makes our home safer. And I think we've learned the lessons from improper disposal. And I focused on trash for a long time, that a piece of styrofoam the size of a, a dime would kill a bird or a fish. So we should eliminate styrofoam from our lives. But if I look at the impact of antidepressants and what it's done to um, our world, so it's a much bigger impact. So they're very smaller amounts, but I think of, if nothing else, I think the movement is making a transition to things that are parts of everyone's lives that we know we can do a very simple step to make a difference. It's the basis of why people recycle in the first place. We know in the past that people were advised to dispose of unused medications either down the drain or down the toilet or mix it with some inert material and put it in the trash. And, and now we've determined that that's not the best thing for the environment particularly because generally these materials will pass through our treatment systems and get into our uh, fresh water systems, our streams, our lakes, and uh, and can can and will cause harm to uh, to uh, uh, reptiles or amphibians or fish or whatever. Uh, and so, we want everybody to know that that is no longer a suggested method of disposing of any drugs or any medications. Um, and since we have taken uh, uh, made a lot of effort in take back programs. Uh, we would encourage people to check in their local communities to uh, find out where they can um, dispose of their medications properly. Yeah, and Barbara makes a good point, and, and, and Michael too, about the environmental effects um, on, on wildlife and on the environment, but also we don't know what the uh, effects might be on human health. Too. So I think it's very important to think when we're protecting the environment, we're also protecting human health and welfare, especially for the most vulnerable in our society, uh, children and the elderly. And government makes the right point. It, we, we could treat this in our wastewater treatment plants, but it would cost millions of dollars. The price of tap water would skyrocket. We wouldn't normally look for these things, so America doesn't. There's no treatment plant in America that's going to try to find out what antidepressants are in the water coming in or the wastewater plants as well. So we, we just don't have the technology, or if we did, we couldn't afford the technology to do the right thing. It's upon us to do the right thing. So that's an excellent point. Okay. Uh, so, um, that one, you were talking about the Take Back programs, uh, Take Back uh, program or something. So I want you to tell our audience more about it. Um, well, uh, I guess it's, it depends on where you live, of course. Uh, but as we mentioned earlier, there are pharmacies that have set up programs where there are a number of ways of doing this. Uh, they will provide you container, you can take it home, you can put your materials in it, you can take it back to the pharmacy. Um, but if you're dealing with painkillers or opiates and those types of things, which are controlled substances, really you have to work through your law enforcement agencies to get rid of those. Uh, the laws today requires uh, proper handling of those and disposal of those, and really our law enforcement people are the primary ways of doing that. Um, so I would just recommend that people check with their local pharmacies, some of the chain pharmacies like Walgreens, CVS, they're getting more involved in disposing of or taking uh, materials back through their through their uh, pharmacies. Um, I don't know what the status is throughout Oklahoma, but I, 
I'm aware that Walgreens is doing some of that in some of larger communities. Yes, yeah, so I think we'll see those uh, disposal bins in Walgreens soon. At this point, they don't have them in every store, but ask the store manager, ask the pharmacist, hey, you gave me these pills, I don't need them anymore, or my mom doesn't need them anymore, what can I do with them? And I'm and pleased that Walgreens has made a very proactive uh, public stance because they are a large player in this industry. Um, so it, it's important to have those boxes that the public has access to without feeling shame of going to the police department and going forward. So that's a really good program. You know, another thing citizens can do is try to lobby for state laws that help yes. allow these or even enforce these that say you must, if you are selling drugs, you must have a receptacle to take back drugs. Um, in Oklahoma, we actually have a law that says that medications can be recycled from a nursing home upon the death of the patient. So there actually is a recycling program in Tulsa County where only nursing homes participate, and it's actually a government-run pharmacy in Tulsa County that allows only those pills to be redistributed. They did about 15,000 medications last year. So there's some success there, but it's only when one dies, only if they die in this nursing home and no one else. So it might be our efforts to help lobby our legislature to have laws like some other states who allow us to even recapture some of that medication. If I had gout medicine and didn't need any more and you needed gout medicine, is there a way that some third party with a pharmacy to be involved in Oklahoma is only allowed if you die? So we think we can maybe proactively help make the law to help progress this movement. Good. So as um, Donald rightly said, you can check out uh, with your community and see where you can get your take back programs and drop off your medication so that you can be exposed to so many risks. And don't flush it in the toilet. Don't flush it. <laughs> don't flush it. So um, apart from the take back program, which other um, method do we have? Let's assume I don't have a take back program in my location. Which other way can I safely dispose of my prescription medication. I know that there are some communities that have household hazardous waste collection uh, that City Stillwater does twice a year and they've added um, pharmaceuticals to that collection. So you might check if your community has a, a household hazardous waste drop off or, or collection. Um, they might add that to it. They're still probably not take controlled substances though. Right. That's my to guess. Take other med medications. Uh, just yeah. general medications, mm -hmm. yes. Um, but, uh, all, but but all but, the, but all, all the police departments, departments will take yeah. those back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, I don't think there's a safe way. I mean for a while we recommended when we found out how bad it was to flush them that we said that they should put them in solid. That you should mix them with coffee grounds and, and other things and keep them in a solid container because they're less dangerous as a solid than they are as a liquid, but that's so much less, I mean, minimally difference in your opinion. So I really don't think there's an option. If you don't have a program, you're going to need to find a program. Save them until you can, you know, use them together, make sure they're handled and stored safely, but then maybe it means you have to travel to a community that has these store facilities. I mean, we can't promise that every answer is going to come to your doorstep. Maybe sometimes you have to go to them. So that be, I would say do that rather than try to find some solution that works with your landfill or your recreation. No, find a way to get in there. Be careful how you transport them though. You can't just dump all your bags into a plastic bag, baggie, and you know, if the cops pull you over and they see a bag of all these different pills, you got some explaining to do. Um, so be careful, make sure you've done this. I even recommend you pick a, 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 on the you pick prescription pill itself, a picture on your phone, know these are the pills from this bottle. If you do keep them in the bottles, take your name off and information about yourself on there for privacy concerns. So transporting them even to this place, it has to be some sort of premeditated, some thought ahead of time thing as well. Yeah, if you don't have a choice and your only choice is a landfill or flushing down a toilet, I think destroying the medications as much as you can and putting them in the trash so they go in a landfill, at least a landfill, today's landfills are, uh, you know, Incredibly sealed, and that would be better than flushing if you, right. if you don't have a program. No, no flushing. No flushing. <laughs> no flushing. Um, our team here is emphasizing no flushing. Um, it, not, it is not good for our water quality and all of those things, and even us is exposing us to so many things. So, no flushing. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Um, so, the last question I have for you guys is can I recycle? my med medicine bottle, like containers, 
Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Empty containers? Yes. What number are they generally? Five? Yeah. They're generally plastic number five. So if your community recycles plastic number five rigid containers, then you can put your empty. And that's uh, for the prescription the ones. The over the counter ones are usually ones or fives. Um, so, but I recommend everybody look at the bottom of their plastic bottle. They are labeled, and it does make a difference. If you have a choice, um, to find whether it's recyclable in your community. But most pill bottles are going to be recyclable in most programs. We have a pharmacy in Nega that actually will take the empty prescription bottles back, which is interesting. That's <laughs> nice. And they're reusable as well. I, I say that I have pill bottles the exact size of quarter. They give a roll of quarters for the turnpike and parking meters and a pill bottle and, yeah. and fishing lures and hooks and things. There's, there's ways to reuse everything in our lives. Even pill bottles, to a point, can be another life as something else. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much for your time today. And uh, you, if you are not online watching us, you can watch this video later and let us know what you think or if you have a comment or questions please feel free to drop them in the comment box and uh, we can get them answered for you throughout the week and also you can share this video so that others can watch and learn from it um, we thank you for watching uh, have a great day thank you Tina thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>